Gets all of your depth information from motion because it's, it's video. That's the that's the biggest strength of it. <coughs> but like any of the rendering programs, um, if you take a still, you notice a lot more, and you have to bring out depth in different ways. Whether it's cooling out the distance, whether there are textures that look good close but not far, but if you're moving around, it's okay because you end up, end up seeing it at the ideal distance. But when you're taking those stills, there are usually some tweaks you might want. Um, and so I'm going to show mostly tweaking Lumion renders in Photoshop um, because you can do anything in Photoshop. <laughs> and, uh, and then also a, a simpler, cheaper version that I used before. I'm going to start with that. All right, so I'm going to start with a rendering taken from Artlantis. Here's the Google SketchUp model. And here's directly from Artlantis. Um, the exposure settings in this program, like a lot, aren't as um, particular as Lumion. So right away, I'm going to adjust the color. Um, and then next, this is a big thing. Many, many programs don't allow you to get building gradients, because in real life, there's no surface that's flat. Um, if you've ever painted, you know every single thing in the world is graded. Um, so most of these rendering programs, unless you apply a certain um, effect to it that many are available in Lumion, but it will be a globally applied effect. So these buildings, for example, they shoot up into the sky, but that blue on the bottom of that building on the top is the exact same blue if you were to sample that in Photoshop. So you want to get some gradients um, on all of it. Um, this, this was a very subtle version of that because I didn't want to heavy, get it too heavy. Um, and then also the trees, when they're weaker, you can, you can do a color sample selection and then get, you can, you can control your shadow on the bottom and then the highlights, the screen is showing up pretty dark, but you got you the gist there. And then toss in some people. And now this is another rendering from Artlantis um, without edit, just to show that there are other programs out there that may be a little cheaper. This is just under $1,000. It has a little less of a function ability, and it can't do um, videos like Lumion can. But one thing that Lumion doesn't do, which, which will likely drive you crazy when you get it, is that it doesn't, it's, it's on the wish list to have two-dimensional views. I, I'm not sure how that didn't get in the first version, but in order to get a plan view, you have to go thousands of feet in the air, and so the perspective, perspective starts to become a two-dimensional view. And then this is another Atlantis view to show you. And now, here's a SketchUp model of project in China. Got a nice little Chinese pantheon there. And then this is the export from Lumion. But you'll see, right in this region, we have, a, we have kind of a depth issue. We don't want to change, let's say we don't want to change that stone color, but this isn't reading, this ground here isn't reading like it's further away than this ground, and it's, and it's com the depth is generally confusing in there. So let's get it darker, and so this really starts to, to read better, and then also the curve wasn't, it, I, I, I wanted my particular sun angle for the shadows of everything, but that sun, angle was bleaching out that white. So you can come in and put a gradient on the curves. So these are just these are these are ways to to get the depth you need that might not be able to be mildly adjustable in, in Lumion. And then here's another SketchUp model, also a China project. Here's the here's one of the exports from Lumion, but you'll see that um, it's a bit the exposure, we're having an exposure problem because we're, we're underneath the, underneath the loggia here. And then this one has the opposite exposure problem. So you can, you can do both exports because you can, you, can, you can control the exposure in Lumion, but it's a global control. And then you can stitch them together and get the balance you want. Um, the foreground still looks too dark on the screen, but I assure you that's not the, <laughs> that's not the case. And then you, you throw in your people. And here's another version. Um, this, if, if you look at, look at how simple this um, 
this this model. I don't necessarily condone the architecture in it, but um, <laughs> but how simple the model is, and then you then you get it through Lumion, and then we've got a sunrise. But let's say we want a little more drama. You can do a lens flare in Lumion, but if you really want to get your own control over it, and the trees aren't quite getting enough love from the sun, so you can add add some add some highlights, a dynamic sky. And then here's another a, a garden view. Do we have a question? No, no, no. no okay. I'm looking. Yeah. <laughs> and then here's a garden view, um, looking looking pretty naked. Um, and then here's it exported from Lumion. I know that I want to do so. One big thing um, with with as we progress in our abilities with with modeling software. Um, the shock and awe factor is going to start going away, and we're really going to have to tailor the, the visualization to the particular project. They'll start to be blown away when they know you're designing for here and you're paying attention to what we were talking about. So if they see the same you know, stock, maybe models and people, uh, as you had in, in, in all of your projects that they saw in your portfolio when you got the job, they're not going to be too happy in China when you, when you plug in, you know, your, your three white girls walking in the foreground that don't have anything to do with, with their current um, you know, demographic presence. So also Lumion, like we saw, you can do some terrain modeling, but there are some subtleties that you might miss because it's not a 3D Studio Max that, um, that you can do the very, very specific um, high quality modeling. So let's say in this example, I just tossed in a tree but I didn't want its shadow. So I exported twice. I exported one without the tree, and then I exported the tree and just plugged it in there because I don't, I want to lie. So that's one thing. In, in Lumion won't let you lie with the sun. If you want to get, I want that tree in the foreground, but I don't want its shadow because it's going to mess up what I'm going to do in the foreground. Just do, just like with the ex, exposure, just export it twice. You can do this with many programs. You may run into this issue. Um, don't do it in streets though, because it's really obvious when you're lying, when you, when you don't have any building shadows um, from the buildings behind you. And then working with some of the reflections. And now they find a lot of beauty in their rock work, and so, and especially in the gardens. And each, each type of rock work has a particular um, meaning and also appreciated beauty to it. So it meant a lot for us to add in, add in these rocks just kind of growing out of the regular pavement. And then a bunch of a bunch of people particular to there. One of the big activities there that we saw a lot is um, men in the park painting with water uh, their symbols on the ground. Whether it's you know whether it's their own thing or 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 certain writings, it's it's really interesting. It's a it's a wide it's a wide practice in the garden. It is. Yeah. So you're able to customize your own components just like you are in SketchUp. You can make them and import them into Lumion. Yep. So if you don't if you don't like what's in there, um, uh, you just you just model in another program. Um, you can find it in the 3D warehouse if there's something good enough. Um, I think that that hut all the way back here, straight from the 3D warehouse, because I'm not going to spend a bunch of time putting detail into that you know thing that I, I peek in the distance. Um, and Lumion doesn't have, you know, 10 Chinese huts to plug in. Uh, it doesn't make sense for them to spend their time in it. But you can find it somewhere else, bring it in a separate model and move it individually. And then we want to get our depth, we want to get our shadows, make the people feel like they're actually part of that right now. So can you export your still images at different resolutions if you wanted to? Yeah. Like, oh. Yep. Yeah. If I, if I wanted to export this twice because mm -hmm. I wanted something in the foreground and the background, and one of them I didn't want to spend as much time, although the rendering speeds for images will will shock you in Lumion. That is in Atlantis, the other program I referenced. You're, you're talking about you know hours, but you're talking seconds or minutes um, for even good good high quality images here. And here's a here's an aerial, and here's a night aerial with all the lights from there. Really wish this. Did you do the lights in uh, Photoshop or? In All of those lights are individually placed in uh, in Lumion. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, no, but the thing is, they have. There's a there's a. You can you can you can, like, other programs, you can you can specify the first one and the last one and how many you want between. 
I really wish this was brighter so you can see it. You can see the rendering, right? <laughs> and then darkening the edges, um, playing with the reflection, and then getting the, the lights to come at you in specific spots a little more. Um, we stopped here, but then we, we tried out a more foggy look. We, we didn't like it, but we just we, we played with it. So these changes that you're making, uh, like in the last scene and in this scene, with adding people or adding these lights or spots, mm -hmm. you're saying all that's done in Lumion or in Photoshop? Everything I'm showing here is done in Photoshop. Okay. Because Lumion, for example, one of my steps here was um, doing the dark in the edges. What Lumino, Lumion will give you is an, an evenly darkened edge in, a, in an oval pattern. But for this image, I don't, I don't want an even dark ed, darkened edge. So a lot of the things that you're going to end up post-editing are things that you could do there, but it's going to be globally applied, or it's going to be applied too evenly on a universal scale. So it's when you really want to get particular, or particular to a place, um, or particular to just a few surfaces, that's when you're going to start doing these things, when it, whether it's depth, drama, how the reflections appear um, further away or closer away, closer to you. And then here's, I, I didn't know if you'd be showing one of the sketchy filters. This is one of the sketchy filters. Um, and I liked the tree that I was using on the street, but it was way too fat when it got closer to you. So I exported it separately and then trimmed it down. It got, it got a little bit of a diet. Um, and then we personalized the train to add their name of their, their street that we were getting this. And there we are. Um, do we have any questions? So, so those are just layers. So you did that all with Photoshop and layers. It's all Photoshop and just showing the different steps, kind of. Right. So it's just a set of different motivations. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So, so these are especially applicable for programs that don't have as many effects. Making sure that you're not just saying, "Oh, well, this is how it came out of the program." Um, make sure your standard for depth is just as if you were drawing it um, or painting it. Don't say this is this is this is how the sun hits that surface. Um, even if it's how it want, you want it to hit the surface for a few of the buildings, if it's not right for your foreground building, go in and change it, grade it, put an effect on it. Um, yeah. Excellent. All right. Moving on to more more image talk, I believe. Yeah. Hmm? Oh. 